so many good questions about pump action shotguns for many years now and I've never known exactly how to answer them but I'm finally in a position to answer those questions but before I do that I have to tell you that the people that help me a lot with all the technical stuff that I can't do so far on Patreon um, have put together what will in time be live streaming so you can reach me and we can have discussions. I can't say exactly when that's going to happen, um, but it will happen probably within the next month or so, <clears throat> or sooner. And Patreon includes that Discord. I, th I hope I have the right um, word for it. By getting back to the pump action shotguns, uh, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but I'm going to start out with another thing, which actually you could probably help me with. Maybe somebody out there could help me with. Uh, there used to be a fantastic auction at Glen Eagles Hotel, and I should get right away, um, before anything else, um, give a big shout out to <laughs> Scotland and the people of Scotland and the hunting in Scotland um, and the fabulous auction that used to be at the Glen Eagles Hotel. This was Sotheby's. Um, I kept a couple of the catalogs, and if you were looking for you know, something really exceptional, something really rare, Glen Eagles was the place to go. Now, I don't know what's happened with COVID. I'll show you the cover of the other catalog. I, ha I have lots of these, but I just can't find them. They're in piles and so on. Um, but yeah, dude, a big shout out to Scotland. What a fantastic people. Amazing um, hunting. And before I get into the, I hope we've film that. Before I get into the meat of the whole thing, I remember sitting at breakfast once in Reno, there was a show, a couple of people from Scotland, and uh, one fellow living in Scotland, and the other fellow had moved some other place, I think, maybe the US, I can't remember. And the fellow who remained in Scotland said, why did you leave? And the guy said, well, to make money. And the fellow from Scotland said, what a loss. And I ha you have to go to Scotland. You you'll agree with the guy, because money isn't everything. But anyway, here's what I need your help with. Um, this is called a rare Larson and Winteros patent 16 bore lever action or lever action repeating gun, number 268. Now, if we can focus on this very unique lever action, I missed it. And um, you know, the bidding gets out of hand at these auctions and you think, well, don't bid because it's too high. And then you leave the auction and you realize <clears throat> it wasn't too high at all. You'll never get a chance at this gun again. And so that's what happened. And this, but these, these have some very unique external functions to them. And I'd dearly love to get one, but you're about impossible. Maybe somebody in Scandinavia, I don't know. Um, please get in touch with me if you have one. Um, it takes a while to get anything imported, and there's a big section in here on how to do all this importing and exporting from the different countries, but it doesn't matter. It, it's, it's a function of time, and then eventually... Um, the transaction is complete. So that's that. And I'll set these books aside. <clears throat> I wish I was in Scotland right now. I put on my tweed vest for the Moors. But anyway, um, so what was the question? Uh, m maybe a hundred messages. How do they lock? Everybody knows the Model 12, the Remington 870. Uh, there are some exceptions, but then into my hands falls a noble 410 shotgun and you can remove the side of the action. And I thought, well, at last, I don't have to explain to people. They, they look at animations, but they still don't quite follow, nor do I, exactly how do these things lock. I mean, the pressure is not that high in any gauge. It's highest in a 410, by the way, which is what this noble shotgun is in. But nevertheless, for a split second, the action has to remain locked, which is self-evident. So here we go, another challenge for the people with the camera. And this is a noble shotgun, and I'll do my best with my bad hands 
but you can see the action is open. I colored some parts. This pink part is for the safety. So that's we can forget about that for now. This reddish part, that's the hammer. That's what would fire the gun. But virtually all or most of the pump action shotguns that you know of will lock the following way. And this, I painted white because the top of this receiver is steel and that's all that matters to accomplish locking. So I'll do my best and I'm gonna, this is the follower. That's what lifts shells from the tubular magazine. This will help all you young guys that rode me. How do these things work? Well, here it is. So, and here's the bolt. So now you have to imagine a shot shell here. It's just been lifted by the follower. It's on the way into the chamber and now there's a lot of pressure here fighting me, but we'll do our best. It comes into place and with a little coaxing at the last instant, <clears throat> it locks. Now, whether that was as smooth as it could be, I don't know, but we'll do that again. So this would not fall. That's because I'm missing half the action, but just this comes forward and, and lock. And here's the lock. It's this ledge against this steel surface. That's all that locks these pump actions. They lock on that ledge. There are all kinds of variations, like the 870 does it a little differently. Um, I don't have one on the table. The Ithaca 37 does it a little differently. But what we'll do is we'll set this aside now. And here's uh, J.C. Higgins. And now remembering what you've just seen, watch the bolt move forward. You'll see this part tip at the last instant right here, it goes up. Now I did that too quickly, but I, I selected this one because you can see this mo movement right here. That's what locks these pump actions on that ledge. And it's sufficient to keep the action closed um, while the shot leaves the barrel. Here's an Ithaca 37. It's almost useless to show this to you um, because they are a bottom eject. But even though you cannot see it, essentially the same thing is happening in the Savage. Um, you, you truly can't see anything. Uh, sorry, in the um, Ithaca 37. But anyway, we'll set this aside. And now to have like full disclosure, Here's an exception to the rule. This is an extremely strong action and quite unique. And you know, it's one of those shotguns that probably sells for too little. If we can film the bolt moving forward, and I'll do my best, at the last instant, did you see that? The bolt actually turns and locks and that motion right there is no different from a bolt action rifle or a Garand. Um, it's exceptionally strong, so strong um, that actually, I, you know, I know people that have done different things with these shotguns involving higher pressures and they, they don't let go. It's an exceptional action. You'll probably ask me what model of Winchester this is. So this one's a model 1300 Upland, uh, two and three quarter and three inch, and um, very fast. And they, you know, engineered it perfectly. So it doesn't have that tipping lock. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I hope that the filming captured uh, the function of that Noble 410, because it's quite interesting to me that something so simple works so well. And I'll finish with um, just a little footnote. I have a bar, Browning bar, not, not the sporting rifle, the original, whatever it is, 1917, um, probably have a year wrong, uh, the 20, it weighs 20 pounds. And it, it actually has a lock that's very similar. The bolt actually also tips up. If you have a look at a bar 
you know, punch in World War I bar, you'll see, I hope all the parts don't fall out, you'll see a lump here on the bar, and that's because the bolt tips up and locks in there. There's no turning bolt. It works more or less like this. Anyway, I hope we got away with this. Um, I've had this disassembled for you for about a month while we made other videos, so I want to put this back together again before all these parts fly all over again. It's actually an exceptional little shotgun, and you'll ask me what model number it is too. And it is, um, I hope we don't have parts falling out all over. It's a noble, um, gee, bad lighting. It looks like a Model 70. That's interesting. Noble Model 70. Could be wrong in this light. Anyway, you can check it up. It's a 410. I've never seen one before. Sounds like stuff is falling all over the place. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope that's helpful. For those of you that wondered about pump action shotguns and um, uh, keep hunting and doing all the great things you do up in Scotland, I hope I get there again one day. And I don't know what happened to the Sotheby's auction. I'll have to look, but if you want to find like the most interesting best firearms uh, a lot of them are in the uk now oh, they're all over the world i have to say um, but anyway somehow that was on my mind and thanks again for being here we'll see you on the next video and don't forget that discord take care until we meet again